This week's video might scare you because it's how often your birth control can fail and it's actually a lot higher than you think. Let's watch this. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, educator, and this, my YouTube channel, is the health class you wish you had in high school. Especially this episode, because you probably didn't even talk about birth control in high school. Or if you did, it probably wasn't a whole lot of detail. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe, turn on the bell, hit the button, never miss an upload. Get ready to hold onto the seat of your pants, my friends, because what I'm gonna show you is a little, how do I say, terrifying. And the reason is, is that when we think of birth control, you probably think like, oh, birth control. I use it and I don't get pregnant. And it's true. Birth control is awesome. It's so great if you don't want to get pregnant, but it's not a hundred percent. And for those of you watching and we're like, Dr. Jen, you never talk about just don't have sex. Of course, not putting a penis in a vagina will not get you pregnant. That's like the main thing there. But if you're having sex, and it's okay if you are, you can have sex just because you wanna feel good. But if you're having sex and you don't wanna get pregnant, using birth control drastically decreases your risk of pregnancy, but it doesn't make it zero. So I'm gonna show you the best methods and the worst methods when it comes to not getting pregnant, but I'm gonna show you some real data that I bet you haven't had explained to you before. So if you can see here, this is my favorite chart when it comes to explaining birth control methods and which are the best in terms of how effective they are down to the worst, because I think this kind of helps you organize all the many choices that we have. So let's take a look. Okay, so when we look here, when you look at the top there, or the top row, these are the most effective. It says that in one year, if you're regularly having sex, if you use these methods, you have a less than a one in a hundred chance of getting pregnant, meaning that if a hundred people using this birth control have sex, less than one of them in that year will get pregnant. So you'll see here that the number one method of birth control in terms of the most effective is actually the arm implant, the next one on. And I do have some content about how to deal with some of the side effects there because it is fantastic when it comes to preventing pregnancy, but there can be some potential side effects. And if you don't care because your most important thing is I don't wanna get pregnant, this can be an awesome method for you. We've also got the IUDs, again, super duper awesome. And those are both reversible. The non-reversible ones are getting your tubes tied or having a vasectomy. Please do not consider a vasectomy reversible. I have content about that here as well. Then you can see on the next row down, this is the shot, the pill, the patch, the ring, and the diaphragm. People who use these and are regularly having sex, six to 12 people who use them will get pregnant in one year. And I wanna talk about perfect use versus typical use, because you might see numbers like, I thought the birth control pill was 99% effective. There is the perfect use, which is in a perfect world, you use your birth control beautifully, you never mess it up, everything goes great, you never throw it up, it never falls off like a condom. None of us are perfect, not even me. I know, hard to believe. So the data that's actually meaningful is typical use. The typical user, how they use it, knowing that sometimes we're not perfect, that's the rate of pregnancy that you should be focusing on. And that's what these rates reflect. In the bottom two rows, you can see the least effective. So we are talking about condoms, which are still the number one way to prevent infection. So even if they're not the most reliable for birth control prevention, they're better than nothing. They're a fantastic option if that's the only option you have. And yeah, they're good to use with another form of birth control, both to make them both more effective and to decrease your risk of infection. And then you've got fertility awareness method or natural family planning. I do have a video on that. And spermicide. So in these groups, like 18 or more people out of 100 will get pregnant. This is not the whole story, but this is the one that is. And I am putting the link to this next resource in my show notes because you're going to play with it and you're going to be a little terrified. Why am I saying this? I am not here to scare you. I am here for a reality check. So the people who put these sorts of comments on my social media and who respond, usually on Twitter, that just say, well, just use birth control and stop being so like such an irresponsible human being. They think that's how unintended pregnancy happens. We know that half of people who have abortions were on birth control the time they got pregnant, meaning that their birth control failed them. They were trying to not get pregnant. So stop pretending that birth control is 100% and that people whose birth control failed should somehow be like ashamed of themselves. Like, no, thank you. That is a huge reason why I made this video. Okay, now onto the thing that might kind of frighten you a little bit. Not to frighten, to empower you. This is from the New York Times, and I love this interactive article. It's like almost 10 years old, but it's still completely relevant. What it does is it shows you how likely you are to be pregnant over 10 years of using a form of birth control. Because those risks that I showed you of pregnancy, six in 100, for example, that means every year, six out of 100 people are getting pregnant. 
And that's every year. So your risk adds up because you're in that group every single year. So let's look at an example. So for example, let's go to the birth control patch. So you can see here at one year, about nine in a hundred people would be pregnant. As you go up to five years, 38 in a hundred will be pregnant. And when you get to 10 years of use, 61 out of 100 will be pregnant. That's a bit mind blowing. And when I first saw this presented this way, wow, it opened up my eyes. Now let's look at the arm implant, which I said was really super duper effective. So let's go down to that. And what's super cool is that as you go across one, one year, it's less than one, four years, it's one. So it's like your chance over 10 years of use of the arm implant or male sterilization, female sterilization, the IUD are super duper low, like five or, or less out of a hundred. So when you think of it this way and you think of cumulative use, now do you understand why sometimes birth control fails? So three important points to take home from this message. Number one, it doesn't mean that you should always be using the most effective form of birth control because that may not be what's the most important to you. Yeah, you may not wanna get pregnant, but maybe you're more concerned about privacy or cost or a bleeding side effect or a benefit of something. So I understand that the decision can be multifactorial. Number two, yeah, it pisses me off that almost all of these, except for male condoms and vasectomies, are the burden is put on the person who can get pregnant. So I really can't stand it when guys and people who can impregnate others come into my comment section yelling about birth control. Like, yeah, we know that that's ideal to use, but also you don't deal with any of the side effects. You don't deal with the costs. You don't deal with having to have a procedure done. And maybe you want to, maybe you would be that guy who'd be like, I would if I could. And I have an opportunity for you to watch about birth control and things up here when it comes to male birth control. But the bottom line is that today we don't have that. So maybe you kind of need to like chill out a little bit. And number three, like sometimes shit happens. Sometimes you forget a pill. Sometimes the condom comes off. Sometimes you are a few weeks late for your depot shot, not because you didn't want to, but because the OBGYN office is so overbooked. It happens, we're not perfect. Stop being the morality police and pretending we're in an episode of the Scarlet Letter and don't think that you get to judge people why they get pregnant or why they might need an abortion. I hope you can see here today by watching this that, yeah, birth control's good, but it's not always great. And we have a ways to go before we absolutely know how to stop everybody from getting pregnant except for abstinence, which yes, I do recommend that if you 100% wanna make sure you're not pregnant. But I also live in a world of reality where sometimes people just wanna have sex and sometimes people wanna have an orgasm and there's no shame in that game. Okay, questions, concerns, thoughts? Drop them in the comment section below. All my references and resources. Go ahead and play with that New York Times birth control thing. It will, it'll blow your mind. And uh, till next week, happy contracepting. Less judging, more loving. Okay, bye.